So I want to do a quick demo of my RiverPod starter kit for Flutter apps. Uh, big believer in what RiverPod is contributing these days. Um, and I want to show you how never again have to delete things in the counter app. I'm sure you've all deleted stuff out of the counter app from time to time. Um, well, all the time actually. Hundreds of times for some of you. So let's uh, look at this. Let's go uh, start a new application project. Let's go to my screencast folder here. And I'll have to move this stuff around later. We're going to select this folder. And we're going to do RiverPod demo app. RiverPod starter kit actually is probably better for this. And after about uh, a minute and a half or so, uh, we go through all the stuff that Flutter Create normally has to do, and it's got some of my common definitions already built in. Wait till that finishes. And boy, I bet many of you recognize this. I wonder if I should make this bigger. Uh, embiggen, embiggen. There we go. That's probably good. Yeah, there we go. That way you'll get to see more of it here. And that way if I redo this, uh, I don't want to break point there. Okay. Um, here, you recognize this text, right? That's all your normal nice stuff. Um, but I don't want, you know, normally what you do, and uh, is, uh, raise your hand if you've done this at least 10 times. No, let's raise your hand if you've done this at least 100 times. Uh, raise your hand if you've done this at least 1,000 times where you sit there and you delete all the comments and you may not like my home page or all that stuff and and you change some of this or whatever and uh, we're gonna skip all that we are going to do go directly to RiverPod we're gonna do it with the help of a snippet I'm going to select all delete goodbye not gonna see that counter app ever again until the next time I invoke all this I have our pod, which is going to basically give me um, my river pod starter kit. Um, uh, I'll explain more of it in a minute. I don't like all that red there, so let's fix the red by noticing this first comment. Add hooks river pod to pub spec, because that's sort of the top level one. It actually brings in all the other river pod options. So it's, it's the easiest thing to type, because you don't have to type one thing. I've got pub spec assist, which is just going to help me type hooks river pod and bring in it at its latest version and also do the pub spec YAML stuff. And you can see in the lower right corner there that it is uh, basically doing that. Pub spec assist is done. So notice all the red went away. Yay. So let me, uh, I'm not going to do any development today. I'm just going to show you what's in my starter kit. And uh, on the next screencast, I'm going to actually build up the counter app once again, but starting from here and using the RiverPod strategies. So uh, we can actually get rid of this first comment because we did that. So that's gone. Um, material, of course, everybody needs material. Uh, and then the two imports that bring in everything else that's useful, or almost all the things that I uh, that I basically type in, and they they bring with them all the good stuff. Uh, Hooks River Pod is off in its own world in terms of what it imports, and Flutter Hooks. No, sorry, it's Flutter Hooks. It's off in its own world. Hooks River Pod is actually in the same repo as River Pod by itself and Flutter River Pod. So uh, that sort of brings in. I might have those backwards. Uh, well, whatever. It doesn't matter. You bring in these two, everything below becomes good. Okay, now, you may notice... If, I'm just going to walk through the code here. Um, you uh, you may not... Uh, um, this, this will be too fast for you to write down or whatever. And yes, I am eventually going to make this a published extension or at least a gist so you can pull this in and do the same thing I just did if you're running a Visual Studio Code. But let's look at the things I've created here. We've got um, a run app once again. We've added provider scope. There it is already set up for RiverPod. Yay. And the child of course being my app. 
Uh, we're going to see in a minute how to actually change that on, a, on all the places it needs to be changed. If you don't like my app as your default app name, uh, down here we have my app, and notice that it extends Hook Widget. Why does it extend Hook Widget? Because then all the hooks are available in this top level uh, class, <laughs> this top level widget. Uh, it also, I found, is a nice side effect. It effectively makes it a consumer widget, which means that um, it will. Um, it, let's see, how do how does how does Remy say it? Um, well, how do I say it now? I guess is the important part. It uh, basically uh, commands a space around all of the um, uh, watches and and uh, listens so that. Other uh, widgets are not built necessarily, unnecessarily. So it's great because so this is essentially a consumer widget plus um, the uh, a widget that can use the hooks. So yay, yay! I think the instructions actually say and it's like consumer widget because it does the right thing. Hey, Remy, if I did that wrong, please let me know. Okay, now this is mostly the same as the. Uh, the, the standard uh, boilerplate that you get. But I've commented out the theme mode, I've commented out the title, I've commented out the theme data. Um, don't need those. Material app. The other thing I really like is safe area. Safe area ensures that I'm not going to squish up and over the uh, extra, um, um, the hardware required uh, device stuff. So uh, Safe Area just goes right here. It goes around the very top of my app. And my app is actually in my home page. And look, my home page also is a hook widget. Same thing. So basically, I'm always building up hook widgets. So down here, I've got, uh, again, very similar things. Here's our build method. It's effectively a stateless widget. You can get state through RiverPod. So I don't think I'm ever going to be typing uh, stateful widget again. We'll see. I'll see how long I, that'll last. Uh, again, return scaffolds. There's my scaffold with body. Here's where app bar would go if you want to do that. Here's where floating action button would go if I wanted to do that. Um, and I could bring that in. So um, this is the sort of minimal steps to get it to the point where I could actually compile this and bring it up on a device or bring it up on the web or bring it up on the desktop or whatever I want to do. This is the minimum steps to do that. Now, there's one little trick I didn't show you. You notice that we've got um, my home page and my app. And it's like, eh, what if I want to be a little cleaner about the name of that? Well, let's invoke, uh, uh, let's get rid of all this and we'll invoke our uh, pod again. Return. Now, you notice where the cursor is sitting. It's actually sitting where I can type something, like I could make this say demo app. And notice that that automatically updates the, uh, the other things that are down there too. So um, that's fine. Now we'll hit uh, option tab because tab by itself apparently breaks everything. So I had to change the binding for this. And it jumps me down to this my home page, which is my home page one. So I'm gonna say demo home. And notice again that it's changing the class down below and everything like that. You've seen that in building the stateful and stateless widgets, so that's not really exciting, but that's where they're sitting in this one. And then I press Option Tab one more time to save that and uh, go to the next tab stop. The next tab stop's right here with container, because we don't know what else we want to do with that. Um, so that's sort of the core of what our pod does. I also have another one called um, uh, RHW, which makes a river pod hook widget. Look at that. Looky there. Okay, which now it gives a, uh, again, it's waiting for me to fill this out. What if I call that my fab? Right? And then uh, option tab out of that. And looky there. Actually, I haven't fixed the. Uh, ending spot on that, but it's going to return a container as well. And we, now we can go back in here and uncomment this, and there's my floating action button. Not really exciting, but there it is. So anyway, that is my RiverPod starter kit, 
And uh, uh, next time I'm going to actually then add to this everything related to um, uh, the counter widget, but done entirely with Riverpod. And I'll also show you the uh, rebuilding boundaries uh, are all very tightly bound with all these hook widgets. So uh, it doesn't make anything execute that it doesn't need to in terms of build. Well, that's it for now.